These are the sermons of St. Alphonsus Liguri, brought to you by Restoring the Faith Media, restoringthefaith.com. Sermon number 13 for Sexagesima Sunday on the unhappy life of sinners and on the happy life of those who love God. And that which fell among the thorns are they who have heard and going their way are choked with the cares and riches of this life and yield no fruit. Luke. In the parable of this day's gospel, we are told that part of the seed which the sower had gone out to sow fell among thorns. The Savior has declared that the seed represents the divine word, and the thorns the attachment of men to earthly riches and pleasures which are the thorns that prevent the fruit of the Word of God, not only in the future, but even in the present life. O misery of poor sinners! By their sins, they not only condemn themselves to eternal torments in the next, but to an unhappy life in this world. This is what I intend to demonstrate in the following discourse. First point, the unhappy life of sinners. Second point, happy life of those who serve God. First point, unhappy life of sinners. The devil receives sinners and makes them imagine that by indulging their sensual appetites, they shall lead a life of happiness and shall enjoy peace. But there is no peace for those who offend God. There is no peace to the wicked, saith the Lord. Isaiah. God declares that all his enemies have led a life of misery, and that they have not even known the way of peace. Destruction and unhappiness in their ways and the way of peace they have not known. Psalms Brute animals that have been created for this world enjoy peace in sensual delights. Give to a dog a bone, and he is perfectly content. Give to an ox a bundle of hay, and he desires nothing more. But man, who has been created for God, to love God and to be united to Him can be made happy only by God and not by the world, though it should enrich Him with all its goods. What are worldly goods? They may be all reduced to pleasures of sense, to riches, and to honors. All that is in the world says St. John, is the concupiscence of the flesh, or sensual delights, and the concupiscence of the eyes, or riches, and the pride of life, that is, earthly honors. St. Bernard says that a man may be puffed up with earthly goods, but can never be made content or happy by them. Inflari potest, satiari non potest. And how can earth and wind and dung satisfy the heart of man? In his comment on these words of St. Peter, Behold, we have left all things. The same saint says that he saw in the world different classes of fools. All had a great desire of happiness. Some, such as the avaricious, were content with riches, 
others ambitious of honors and of praise were satisfied with wind others seated round a furnace swallowed the sparks that were thrown from it these were the passionate and vindictive others in fine drank fetid water from a stagnant pool and these were the voluptuous and unchaste O oh, fools adds the saint do you not perceive that all these things from which you seek content do not satisfy but on the contrary increase the cravings of your heart of this we have a striking example in Alexander the Great who after conquering half the world burst into tears because he was not master of the whole earth many expect to find peace in accumulating riches but how can these satisfy their desires major pecunia says saint augustine avaritiae fauces non claudit sed excendit a large quantity of money does not close but rather extends the jaws of avarice and is the enjoyment of riches excites rather than satiates the desire of wealth thou wast debased even to hell thou hast been wearied in the multitude of thy ways yet thou saidst not i will rest i say us poor worldlings they labor and toil to acquire an increase in wealth and property but never enjoy repose the more they accumulate riches the greater their disquietude and vexation the rich have wanted and have suffered hunger but they that seek the Lord shall not be deprived of any good the rich of this world are of all men the most miserable because the more they possess the more they desire to possess they never succeed in attaining all the objects of their wishes and therefore they are far poorer than men who have but a competency and seek God alone these are truly rich because they are content with their condition and find in God every good they that seek the Lord shall not be deprived of any good to the Saints because they possess God nothing is wanting to the worldly rich who are deprived of God all things are wanting because they want peace the appellation of fool was therefore justly given to the rich man in the gospel who because his land brought forth plenty of fruits said to his soul soul thou hast much goods laid up for many years take rest eat drink make good cheer Luke but this man was called a fool thou fool this night do they require thy soul of thee and whose shall those things be which thou hast provided and why was he called a fool because he imagined that by these goods by eating and drinking he should be content and should enjoy peace rest he said eat drink hast thou the soul of a brute that thou expectest 
to make it happy by eating and drinking? But perhaps sinners who seek after and attain worldly honors are content? All the honors of this earth are but smoke and wind. And how can these content the heart of a Christian? The pride of them, says David, ascendeth continually. The ambitious are not satisfied by the attainment of certain honors. Their ambition and pride continually increase. And thus their inquietude, their envy, and their fears are multiplied. They who live in the habit of sins of impurity feed, as the prophet Jeremiah says, on dung. How can dung content or give peace to the soul? Ah, what peace! What peace can sinners at a distance from God enjoy? They may possess the riches, honors, and delights of this world, but they never shall have peace. No, the word of God cannot fail. He has declared that there is no peace for his enemies. There is no peace to the wicked, saith the Lord, I say us. Poor sinners, they, as St. Chrysostom says, always carry about with them their own executioner, that is, a guilty conscience which continually torments them. St. Isidore asserts that there is no pain more excruciating than that of a guilty conscience. Hence he adds that he who leads a good life is never sad. In describing the deplorable state of sinners, the Holy Ghost compares them to a sea continually tossed by the tempest. The wicked are like the raging sea, which cannot rest. Isaiah Waves come and go, but they are all waves of bitterness and rancor. For every cross and contradiction disturbs and agitates the wicked. If a person at a ball or musical exhibition were obliged to remain suspended by a cord with his head downwards, could he feel happy at the entertainment? Such is the state of a Christian in enmity with God. His soul is as it were turned upside down. Instead of being united with God, and detached from creatures, it is united with creatures and separated from God. But creatures, says St. Vincent Ferrar, are without and do not enter to content the heart which God alone can make happy. Non instrunt ibi ubi est citis. The sinner is like a man parched with thirst and standing in the middle of a fountain because the waters which surround him do not enter to satisfy his thirst. He remains in the midst of them more thirsty than before. Speaking of the unhappy life which he led when he was in the state of sin, David said, my tears have been my bread day and night, whilst it is said to me daily, Where is thy God? To relieve himself, he went to his villas, to his gardens, to musical entertainments, and to various other royal amusements. But they all said to him, David, 
If thou expectest comfort from us, thou art deceived. Where is thy God? Go and seek thy God, whom thou hast lost, for he alone can restore thy peace. Hence David confessed that in the midst of his princely wealth he enjoyed no repose, and that he wept day and night. Let us now listen to his son Solomon, who acknowledged that he indulged his senses in whatever they desired. Whatsoever my eyes desired, I refused them not. Ecclesiasticus. But after all his sensual enjoyments, he exclaimed, Vanity of vanities, behold, all is vanity and affliction of spirit. He declares that all the pleasures of this earth are not only vanity of vanities, but also affliction of spirit. And this sinners know well from experience, for sin brings with it the fear of divine vengeance. The man who is encompassed by powerful enemies never sleeps in peace. And can the sinner, who has God for an enemy, enjoy tranquility? Fear to them that work evil. Proverbs The Christian who commits a mortal sin feels himself oppressed with fear. Every leaf that moves excites terror. The sound of dread is always in his ears. Job. He appears to be always flying away, although no one pursues him. The wicked man fleeth when no man pursueth. Proverbs. He shall be persecuted, not by men, but by his own sin. It was thus with Cain, who after having killed his brother Abel, was seized with fear, and said, Every one, therefore, that findeth me shall kill me. Genesis The Lord assured him that no one should injure him. The Lord said to him, No, it shall not be so. But notwithstanding this assurance, Cain, pursued by his own sin, was, as the scripture attests, always flying from one place to another. He dwelt a fugitive on the earth. Moreover, sin brings with it remorse of conscience, that cruel worm that gnaws incessantly and never dies. Their worm shall not die. Isaiah If the sinner goes to a festival, to a comedy, to a banquet, his conscience continually reproaches him, saying, Unhappy man, you have lost God. If you were now to die, what should become of you? The torture of remorse of conscience even in the present life, is so great that to free themselves from it, some persons have put an end to their lives. Judas, through despair, hanged himself. A certain man who had killed an infant was so much tormented with remorse that he could not rest. To rid himself of it, he entered into a monastery, but finding no peace even there, he went before a judge, acknowledged his crime, and got himself condemned to death. God complains of the injustice of sinners in leaving him, who is the fountain of all consolation, 
to plunge themselves into fetid and broken cisterns, which can give no peace. For my people have done two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and have digged to themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. You have, the Lord says to sinners, refused to serve me, your God, in peace. Unhappy creatures, you shall serve your enemies in hunger and thirst and nakedness and in want of every kind, because thou didst not serve the Lord thy God with joy and gladness. Thou shalt serve thy enemy in hunger and thirst and nakedness and in want of all things. Deuteronomy This is what sinners experience every day. What do not the vindictive endure after they have satisfied their revenge by the murder of an enemy? They fly continually from the relations of their murdered foe and from the minister of justice. They live as fugitives, poor, afflicted, and abandoned by all. What do not the voluptuous and unchaste suffer in order to gratify their wicked desires? What do not the avarice suffer in order to acquire the possession of others? Ah, if they suffered for God, what they suffered for sin, they would lay up great treasures for eternity and would lead a life of peace and happiness. But by living in sin, they lead a life of misery here. To lead a still more miserable life for eternity hereafter. Hence they weep continually in hell, saying, We wearied ourselves in the way of iniquity and destruction and have walked through hard ways. Wisdom. We have, they exclaim, walked through hard ways, through paths covered with thorns. We wearied ourselves in the way of iniquity. We have labored hard. We have sweated blood. We have led a life full of misery, of gall, and of poison. And why? To bring ourselves to a still more wretched life in this pit of fire. Second point, the happy life of those who love God. Justice and peace have kissed. Psalms. Peace resides in every soul in which justice dwells. Hence David said, Delight in the Lord, and he will give thee the requests of thy heart. To understand this text, we must consider that worldlings seek to satisfy the desires of their hearts with the goods of this earth. But because these cannot make them happy, their hearts continually make fresh demands. And how much soever they may acquire of these goods, they are not content. Hence the prophet says, Delight in the Lord, and he will give thee the requests of thy heart. Give up creatures. Seek your delight in God, and he will satisfy all the cravings of your heart. This is what happened to St. Augustine, who as long as he sought happiness in creatures, never enjoyed peace. But as soon as he renounced them and gave to God all the affections of his heart, he exclaimed, All things are hard, O Lord and thou alone art repose. As if he said, Ah, Lord, I now know my folly. I expected to find felicity in earthly pleasures. 
but now I know that they are only vanity and affliction of spirit, and that thou alone art the peace and joy of our hearts. The apostle says that the peace which God gives to those who serve him surpasses all the sensual delights which a man can enjoy on this earth. The peace of God which surpasseth all understanding. Philippians. Saint Francis of Assisi, in saying, My God and my all, experienced on this earth an anticipation of paradise. Saint Francis Xavier, in the midst of his labors in India for the glory of Jesus Christ, was so resplenished with divine consolations that he exclaimed, Enough, O Lord, enough! Where, I ask, has any lover of this world been found so satisfied with the possessions of worldly goods as to say, Enough, O world, enough! No more riches, no more honors, no more applause, no more pleasures. Worldlings are constantly seeking after higher honors, greater riches, new delights. But the more they have of them, the less are their desires satisfied and the greater their disquietude. It is necessary to persuade ourselves of this truth that God alone can give content. Worldlings do not wish to be convinced of it through an apprehension that if they give themselves to God, they shall lead a life of bitterness and discontent. But with the royal prophet I say to them, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is sweet. Psalms. Why, O oh sinners, will you despise and regard as miserable that life which you have not as yet tried? O oh, taste and see, begin to make a trial of it. Hear Mass every day, practice mental prayer in the visitation of the Most Holy Sacrament. Go to communion at least once a week. Fly from evil conversations. Walk always with God. And you shall see that by such a life, you will enjoy that sweetness and peace which the world, with all its delights, has not hitherto been able to give you.